Hi, I'm Jonathan Ogle. This edition of Spectrum of the Arts is a bit different from those in the past, but the content is just as entertaining and enlightening. Today, we're going to make three stops at the Dunedin Fine Arts Center to take a look at a couple of the latest exhibits. We'll watch Perkins Elementary visual arts teacher Christy Gaunt work in a virtual art classroom. And we'll take you to Ruth Eckert Hall in Clearwater for a look and listen to one of this year's all-county chorus performances. Our first stop is at the Dunedin Fine Arts Center, where Todd Still, Youth Education Director, is in his 13th year. Currently on display is the middle school exhibit called Taking Shape. We had a video conference recently with Todd and asked him how it all began. There was always a request to be able to showcase uh, the children's work from the Pinellas County Schools, uh, but we didn't have the gallery space. So it was in 2010 in one of our main major expansions where we added a um, more studio space, a dark room, etc. We were able to add um, a, a dedicated gallery space for the kids. And so um, we were able to do the elementary school exhibits, the middle school and the high school exhibits, plus um, some other exhibits like featuring the Dunedin schools and that kind of thing. Because of COVID-19, uh, this pandemic that's raging across our, our planet right now, um, the DFAC it has been closed um, and our, our exhibition reception was scheduled for the end of March, but was canceled for obvious reasons. Um, the, your your uh, Dunning Fine Arts Center has responded by going virtually with this exhibition. Can you tell us more about what happened and what this is all about? Well, uh, we have a, on our website a, a page called The Art of Social Distancing, where we're featuring adult interest type things where exhibits, classes, workshops, that kind of thing. Um, and then we have the kids stuff, which has some activities. It has a cool video of the dinosaurs uh, in the stop motion machine in the kids area coming to life at night and getting into a little PT cruiser and driving through all the galleries, uh, fighting over the radio station. So it's really kind of a fun thing. Um, what happened with the, the Taking Shape exhibit was we were able to get it actually up and installed in the galleries. We did have some people who were able to come in and enjoy and see it, but like you said, we had to close down. We closed actually a little bit earlier, middle of March, and um, which unfortunately that's what we really look forward to is the receptions and, and the, res the smiling faces and the proud parents and the proud children and students. So um, it's greatly affected it and I think um, it's kind of challenging for us because we we do face to face. Um, the art center really doesn't do online because it's that personal interaction. And I think the Zoom is great, but you still do lose something without not having the person in the room with you where you can see their artwork and get feedback and have that kind of interaction. Uh, how many artworks are in this uh, Taking Shape Middle School exhibition? Uh, 72. Okay, 72. 72 pieces, um, and it is it is strictly the middle schools. And I think uh, the awards, um, there's maybe five different schools, one, two, three, four, five, five different schools that had students that um, re received the artistic merit or the honorable mention. And then how are, how are the awards decided? Um, well, it varies from exhibit to exhibit. Um, usually what we do is we have our curator of exhibits. Um, she will uh, select the winners. Um, sometimes um, her assistant curator, uh, he might. Um, I've had my assistant who is, has more experience in like the early childhood uh, backgrounds uh, and also with um, our weekend assistant who's working on her art degree sometimes they tag team it um, usually because I'm involved in uh, the selection process to some degree I usually don't um, do that uh, because I was part of selecting to begin with so trying to get somebody that that has the artistic background and the eye and it's really difficult because all of them are award winners and on any given day you could walk in and go well these six should be the winners. And then the next day you could go in and say, well, these six should be the winners. And, you know, so it, it's really, it's really tricky. 
It is, and uh, e even before uh, you get to, you know, select, um, you know, the, rema the remainder of the show, we have for our teachers uh, here in Pinellas that, that look through all of the uh, entries by our teachers, middle school art teachers, and they, they score them on a four-point holistic rubric, and the ones that you get to see are highest um, rated or scored works, so we're looking at like fours and threes, and I can, I can see how challenging it is to, to pick awards for the show. Well, and I think I think you've said it in the past too that basically being selected to be in the exhibit, you are an award winner. Basically, um, we do put them in frames that are glass and they have the lighting, so they're being shown in a in a formal gallery setting with gallery exhibit signage and such. So it is a, it is a big deal for them to be able to see their work in that kind of space. And now they get to see it uh, on your um, on the Dunning Fine Arts Center's website, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll make sure we provide a link uh, to that uh, so that um, anybody interested can come uh, visit online virtually and see the uh, the works. You guys have a, another uh, student art show uh, on your website, another mm -hmm. virtual exhibition, and this one's special because it showcases uh, schools that are in the city of Dunedin. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us more about this exhibition? This was um, an exciting exhibition too that started maybe a couple years before doing all the counties, before we actually had the dedicated youth gallery. We were doing it in the community center with some portable panels and such. It was brought pretty much about by uh, the city, uh, a city commissioner. Um, but what's nice about this one it's private schools it's charter schools it's um and it's elementary middle school high school and this is the first year that we haven't had it actually physically in the building um, the middle school exhibit of course was put up on the walls and was photographed and videoed in place uh, the dunning showcase though the uh the teachers when i announced that we weren't going to be able to to do it um, there are a few that said, well, hey, what if, uh, what if we send you the work? I think it was Linda Hildebrandt that uh, came forward with that. And um, I said, sure. And so um, we got everybody on board and they sent me the images. And um, I probably had to tweak maybe 20. Um, the plus side with the virtual um, gallery exhibit is that um, the numbers aren't limited though. So I think in this particular exhibit, it's, I think there's 86 images. Where in our regular gallery, there's only 70 frames in the gallery, and then there's two outside of the gallery. So it's a pretty exciting show. Um, we've got a lot of good feedback from the teachers. Um, it's a it's a big positive for the kids, especially since you know school kind of abruptly ended, and you know it's it's a nice, bright, shiny point for them to for the end of their school year because we we also did certificates for them as well and sent them to the teachers to distribute the other plus thing about the dunning showcase it's it is more of a showcase where um it's not juried so when the the art teachers send in their pieces those are the pieces that are going to get in um, we can it's easy to set the number we know how many schools and so we say okay if there's eight or nine schools participating you can only send in eight or nine whatever this year I think we had more schools um, participate than normal uh, which is good which kind of a uh, bumped the number up a little bit which is good though how about the summer camps they're always a popular program at the Dunning Fine Arts Center what are the plans for them we, we limited the summer camp sizes so that we're in the social distancing parameters. The studios are set up where uh, normally maybe there's two to four children, uh, students sharing a table where now it's one child sharing. It's not, they're not sharing a table. They have their own table. So the groups are at a max of eight um, with one student assistant and teacher. So we're still within the 10, but we're, we're still waiting to see what you know what they say we can do so we're we're hoping to start june 1st with limited you know uh, well with a very limited max smaller sizes of course we've always promoted the uh the good hygiene we had our own signs up every year about you know cover your mouth wash your hands you know all that kind of stuff so we've been very fortunate that we already kind of doing pretty much all that 
Um, we have some additional cleaners, peroxide and stuff, and we're altering the, the drop off and pick up and so to try and avoid mass groups. Um, it's amazing to see all the kids work and uh, I'm glad we were able to get something up so that it can actually stay up longer because probably people are seeing this uh, well after the exhibit probably would have already come down anyway. So um, and that is a plus with the virtual um, exhibits though. Is I, I, we don't plan on taking it off the website. I don't know when that would be. So most likely, you know, through the summer, so. Well, excellent. So uh, people will get to enjoy it and, and enjoy it in a different way and even longer. So, yes. well, thank you for, uh, you know, having this show and doing this for, um, you know, Pinellas County school students. Uh, we really appreciate, you know, everything that you guys do. Uh, we love our partnership uh, with the Dunning Fine Arts Center. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's unfortunate we weren't able to physically get together, but this is, um, I guess, the next best thing that, that, you know, we can make happen. So thank you for doing the virtual exhibition and the pictures and the video is, are fantastic. So we'll encourage um, everybody to go and visit your website. So thank you for doing the virtual exhibition and the pictures and the video is, are fantastic. So we'll encourage um, everybody to go and visit your website so that they can enjoy the show and look at other great things on your website. Okay, well, thanks. We appreciate all your help and support over the years too. Creative art lessons have continued remotely during this difficult time. With Pinellas County School students being shown some creative steps that they can do at home to produce some pretty neat work. Here's Christy Gaunt. Hi friends and welcome to Ms. Gaunt's online art classroom or as most of you call me, Ms. G. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's get started on what this week's project is going to be. So we are going to start off here with a blank sheet of paper, white piece of paper. Okay, and we are going to be turning these into aliens. Now, let me show you how this is going to work. With our piece of paper here, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna fold it in half. So go ahead, take this corner and line it on up. Take this corner, line it on up. So you've got corner to corner. And we're gonna do a long fold, and it's okay if it's not absolutely perfect. But we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do a long fold like a hot dog. So just like this, if I could take my paper and if I could put a hot dog inside there, I would eat it right now. All right, so with this, now what we want to do is on the edge, okay, the folded edge of our piece of paper, we're going to write our name. Now, we want our name to go from this side of the paper to this side of the paper, okay? And when we are writing our name, we wanna make sure that our letters come all the way down to this folded edge. So let me show you. For instance, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to write my name here. So I'm gonna also practice maybe doing some letters that are a little bit taller, shorter, maybe some that are wider and some that are narrower. And I might even do some capitals and some lowercase ones. All right, so let's try it. So let me start. First here, I'm gonna do an M. I'm gonna start down from the bottom. I'm gonna make this one a little bit loopy. There's some like this. All right, so there's my M. Now I'm gonna do my S. I'm gonna make my S pretty tall. So I'm thinking I'll do something like this. All right, again, notice how I'm going from, uh, you know, I'm starting at the bottom, and this one I decided to go up pretty tall, but I'm starting at my edge over here, okay? Don't start your name over here because then you may not have enough space to finish it. All right, so after I do this part, I'm gonna write my next one. So I'm gonna do a capital here. So capital G. I'm gonna make this one pretty tall. Check it out. All right, now I'm gonna do an A. And I'm thinking right about there. Okie doke, now I'm gonna make my U really tall. All right, there's my U. Here comes my N. What I might do, whoa, Miss G's pencil broke. What I might do is go ahead and stop my N. You're right about there to make it fun. And I'm gonna take my T, I'm gonna make a capital T for this. It's gonna start a little bit above there. 
And then come on down like this. All right, so there is Miss Gaunt's name, okay? Now, I see again how I went from this side to this side, all right? Fill that space, I promise. You're gonna wanna use it. Now, we're gonna be cutting our names out, but I don't want you to cut necessarily the lines that you made with your pencil. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over on my edge over here and I'm gonna sort of create just like an outline around my letters. This area might be a little tight, but I kind of still wanna do it. So I'm gonna come around here and sort of loop back around. I think it's gonna have a pretty interesting shape there. All right, so I'm gonna come from the top here. And again, I did some of my letters pretty tall, so they might sort of cut off at the top, but that is quite okay. So again, we're creating sort of this outline. I could come, yeah, I'll come around here and I'll come all the way down. Fantastic. All right, so check it out. All right, outlined around my name. Now, let's talk about how you're gonna cut this out. You can go one section at a time, all right? But again, we're gonna cut along those lines that we just made. I'm gonna go really slow at first to kind of show you guys. Look how I can rotate my paper as I cut too. I can also do little sections at a time. I'm gonna twist this over this way. Look, I might even cut off there and just say, okay, let me come back. Now remember, our paper is folded right now and we wanna to continue to keep it folded. And we're not going to open it until after we are done cutting. So. And I'm going to come up this way. And if you wind up cutting not quite on your line, maybe you cut a little bit too high, you cut a little bit too low, that's okay. You're just kind of working right now on creating or cutting along the outline, and that's what's helping you to create a shape for your A layer. Okay? So you've now cut out your name plus the outline of your name. So now what we're going to do is we are actually going to open up our piece of paper. All right, I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna flatten it out. Oh my goodness. Would you look at that shape? Pretty interesting, right? Now remember, we're turning our names once we open up our pieces of paper. We're turning them into aliens. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to look at the shapes that I made and start to think about where I can draw out some elements of my alien. Now, one thing that I want to talk to you about is what happens when we fold our paper and we cut it and we open it back up. This is called symmetry, all right? So when you have a line and you have something on this side that then reflects over onto the other side, that is called symmetry. And right here you can see a good example of vertical symmetry. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start to look at my shapes. All right, so let's see. These areas here I think would look really great to be my tentacle arms of my aliens. So along these areas I might draw some tentacles along the lines. And because I'm working with symmetry, I might want to repeat it on this side to this side. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and add some tentacles over this way. And I'm working with pencil first, just because uh, if I change my mind, it's easier for me to erase it that way. All right. Let's see, what else can I add? Well, I think for starters, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to make my alien wear an apron. So, I'm gonna come around this way and I'm going to draw the shape for my apron. Here are my sleeves. I have to go down the sides of my hands. Obviously, my tentacle arms need to go through the sleeves of my apron. And I know my apron's probably gonna go down to, let's say, got some indents right here. So maybe I'll go ahead and draw a line right across here that goes through my apron. Oh, hello, we have been joined here by my uh, my student Madeline. Oh, thank you so much for joining our lesson. 
Okay, you can get off now. So when you are drawing out the different elements of your alien, you might start to want to think about, okay, what kind of alien is this gonna be? So for instance, is your alien gonna have two eyes or maybe six eyes? Is your alien pretty silly or is it very serious? Does your alien like striped socks? Or do you think it's gonna wear a tie? Hmm. So I want you to start to think about uh, some different elements that you can incorporate. Now, as we saw, mine has some tentacles and I'm wearing an apron because when is Miss G not wearing her apron? Well, maybe not right now, but then I'm gonna go ahead uh, and I'm also gonna start thinking about my eyes. So I think for my alien, I might add in probably about four eyes. Hmm, let's try that. So I'm gonna come up here and I like to draw my eyes kind of something like this. All right, maybe I'll come over here. I'll make this one down here at the bottom. So as you can see, Ms. G is making her eyes on her alien pretty, pretty silly. So I got them kind of going all over the place. All right, now for my eyelashes, maybe I'll use some rectangle shapes. So remember when we talked about symmetry and about how anything on one side of the line, you could take that reflected to the other side. So see that I have my eyelashes on this side of the line are going this way, and my eyelashes on this side of the line are going that way. All right, something to think about. For my nose, I don't know, what do you guys think? What if I take this and I make a heart? So that's a cool thing, let's talk about that. So I can do one side of a heart like this, and then what happens to the other side? It's gonna reflect over. Check it out, I have a heart nose. Hmm. All right, so now I gotta think about my mouth. All right, well I think, because Miss G is a very silly person, I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to draw a wavy line, something like that. Maybe I'll start out here and I'll sort of draw down. I think like that. All right, what do you think? Should Miss G stick her tongue out? Hmm, I think I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna come here and draw a tongue shape. Something like that. Maybe I'll come in out here at the top, add just another line in. It's gonna be my teeth. I'm gonna have two real big teeth in the front. And maybe I'll put a little line for my tongue. All right, so check it out. Miss G has some silly faces right here. Now I think maybe I'll come in and I'll add in my glasses. So I'm just gonna do big lines. And you guys can draw your aliens however you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and put lines out from there. That's gonna connect over. All right. This is why we draw on pencil. Come on this way. All right, cool. So I got a good chunk done. I could go ahead and maybe I could add in some eyebrows, but I think what I'm gonna do actually over here is I think I'm gonna add a line that's gonna be following along this shape that I already defined here, already cut out. And that's gonna be my ears. So I'm gonna add some earrings. All right, so now coming down to this way, I think we can gotta go draw some pockets for my aprons, but maybe you're not wearing an apron like Miss G. Maybe you're wearing a striped shirt. Maybe you're wearing a your PJs. Maybe you are wearing your favorite dress. You can go ahead, you can draw whatever you would like. But inside my pockets here, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw over in this one. See, I'm going to draw two little ears. I have a cat sticking out. You never know. My alien might have a cat inside his pocket. And so I think I'll come up and I'll draw some art supplies. Give me a little brush. This one. Use a bigger brush. 
All right, and what do you think in this one? I think maybe Ms. G should add some food. So let's see, I'm going to draw top of an apple, and maybe the top of a banana. All right. Now, it looks like my last part down here, I got to add in something for the bottom. So I think what I might do, I've been talking a lot about some striped socks. I think I'm going to add some striped socks for mine. So I'm just going to do some vertical lines right here. And maybe here I'll go ahead. And this is what my shoes would look like if I had little laces. All right. So check it out. Here is Miss G as an alien. I don't really have any hair, but you could go ahead. You can add hair to yours if you'd like. Now let's talk about what you're going to do in terms of filling it in. Now, you can decide that maybe you want to use markers. Maybe you want to use crayons. Maybe you want to use colored pencils. If you have paint, you may even want to use that too. Uh, I think for me, I might go ahead and sort of outline mine first with a marker around all my pencil marks that I already made. And then I think I might, I might just color it in with both my crayons and my colored pencils. So let's see what this is going to turn out as. And this will obviously be All right, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've done my outline, and now I'm going to start to fill in with some color. All right, so there you can see we are done with our name aliens. So as I went in and I filled in with my color, I made sure to use a variety of colors to keep it nice and vibrant. Uh, I decided to do green skin tone for my alien, but you may choose to do your alien whatever colors you would like. Uh, I can't wait to see what all of your name aliens look like. Oh, hello, Madeline. Thank you so much for joining us at class again today. So both of us cannot wait to see what your name aliens look like. <laughs> And I miss you all so much. Hope you've enjoyed our online art class today. See you next week. Before we go, we'd like to offer you a little musical entertainment as we look back at one of the performances at the annual all-county concert at Ruth Eckert Hall. I'm Jonathan Ogle. We'll see you next time on Spectrum of the Arts. Thank you.